Welcome everyone to episode 40 of my Shrewsbury Town career on FM16. We are nearing the end of the season and up next we're at home to Manchester United. Only seven games to go. We are into April and awards have been handed out. So the March Player of the Month goes to Raheem Sterling. But in second was Clinton Naji, the loanee from Tottenham for uh, Shrewsbury Town. The Young Player of the Month goes to Mbolo from Arsenal. But in second is Lewis Freed at the age of 20. Look at his attributes. It's incredible. I, I wonder what he's going to be like when... Let's say another three, four seasons. He's, oh, he's just going to be world class, isn't he? He's going to be incredible. Always getting picked for England as well. I mean, just look at his average worst rating. 7.05. That's brilliant. And his best is 8.8. .8. He's just going to keep getting better and better and better as the seasons keep going. Certainly worth the investment. And I think he would be for you guys as well if you used to look into bringing in Lewis Reed. If you're lucky for a central midfielder, definitely go ahead and snap him up. But anyway, the Manager of the Month award goes to Diego Simeone from Man City. And we got some championship. I'm not sure why I'm still subscribed to the championship awards, actually. But anyway, let's move on. So, in the previous episode, we unfortunately got knocked out of the FA Cup fifth round by Wolverhampton Wanderers in that away game at the Molyneux. It was so close. But we went on a bit of a run. This is really sweet. I mean, as I said in that previous episode, it was a brilliant chance to go on a, a bit of a run because both... Norwich, Bournemouth, they're finding it difficult at the moment in the league. And we managed to beat Sheffield Wednesday as well, 3-0. We were banging in the goals uh, recently. Then we beat Norwich 3-1 at home. Brady, Najee, Luke Williams all getting on the score sheet. And it was on my birthday as well. So the players really stepped up their game to make sure that we got the result that we wanted. And then we went and beat Bournemouth at home with Lionel Cole getting both goals in that game. He just cannot stop scoring. And then the lads went and let themselves down. They did try against Tottenham, um, but they did go and lose and drop all three points. I mean, earlier in the season, we drew 2-2, put up a really good challenge there, but we just couldn't get past that finishing line against Tottenham this time around at White Hart Lane. It was always going to be a difficult challenge, and it didn't help matters when Kevin Long scored an own goal. But up next, we've got Manchester United. Now, going back a couple of episodes ago in this series, I'm sure the majority of you will remember that game at Old Trafford. What a game. Probably one of the best games I've had on FM over the last couple of games. It was incredible at Old Trafford. It finished 2-2 there. I wonder what's in store for us when they come and visit us at the Greenhouse Meadow. They've got a couple of players out injured and also some unregistered like Rojo and Varela. And Dragovic is suspended. I don't want to get my hopes up too much at the moment because there's still seven games to go and everything can change dramatically especially mid-table but we're in the top half we're in the top half of the table when we were favorites to be relegated to go back down to the championship we're defying those odds and we are now above Arsenal I mean they're, they're a point or two behind us but we just got to make sure we put together a nice run I mean we've beaten Sheffield Wednesday Norwich Bournemouth and if we can beat United I mean United they haven't had the best of form. They've lost their last two games in the league. Who knows what will happen at the greenhouse. We might be able to get three points against Manchester United. Especially with uh, someone like Clinton G, who is our top goal scorer. Comes in second. As you can see there with um, 20 goals to his name. If he can get on the score sheet against United then I fancy our chances. Let's see what we're up against. So for Shrewsbury Town I've gone with the 4-3-3. Alberto, Reid, Bakuna... Clinton G all start for Manchester United. You've got Romelu Lukaku, Griezmann, Mata, Bernardo Silva, Schweinsteiger and Herrera in central midfield. At the back, Luke Shaw, Jones, Rugani and Damian. And in goal, David De Gea. Comparing this United side to the last time we played them at Old Trafford, it looks weaker. And we get kick off at the greenhouse. We are underway. What is going to happen this time around? It was such an eventful fixture at Old Trafford earlier in the season. If you missed that, be sure to go back and check out that episode. You can find it in the playlist or on the uh, the main channel page. Not much happening at the moment. We're really controlling though. I mean, we've had six shots, two on target. Man United haven't had any. We're dictating possession. We're frustrating United, I'm sure. But here they come now. Mata finds Lukaku. He's through. And what a save from Luke Weiler. Thankfully, we can just calmly, that's it, just calmly 
play it out of the back. Done. And that's going to be half time. We're going to go in all level. Nil nil. We've had the better of chances. We've had the, the majority of the ball as well. It's looking very good heading into the second half. And I'm sure Mancini is scratching his head at what he has to do to try and get the result here against Shrewsbury Town. And it's Manchester United that get the game restarted for the final 45 minutes. What is going to happen? Anything exciting? I hope so. At the moment, it's not living up to that previous game at Old Trafford. Oh, it's on for Lukaku. Good interception there from Kevin Long. But Voller knocks it on to Juan Mata, who whips that in for Griezmann, who goes for goal, hits the post. And it's Demetrio that finds Brady. And we can break here now. It's going to have to be Clinton G to go it alone. He pumps it out wide. Try and hold on to the ball, lads, please. Lionel Cole. Here we go. Finds Todd Kane. Can he swing this in? He can't. Reed to Alberto. Got to feel something's coming here for Shrewsbury Town. How are we going forwards with such confidence against a deflated Manchester United? They're in poor form at the moment. And lost their last two games on the bounce. Follins whips that in. Lucky through Lukaku. Who's ready to strike. Icardi just about managing to keep up with such a player like Romelu Lukaku. Big frame, big aerial presence for Manchester United. And it's Mata. Oh no, Reed has managed to win the ball back. That looked a bit dodgy then, that pass. I thought Bakuna was going to be knocked off the ball. But it's Brady. Come on, where's that overlap? Dimitri just not running forwards quick enough for my liking anyway Alberto on to Brady come on can we get a goal here Brady oh Mata read the game perfectly there knocking it up to Griezmann onto the right side oh good defending there from Long who has to be careful he's on a yellow onto Darmian in space why are we closing him down Mata goes for goal and what a save <sighs> oh my god by Luke Weiler wow they may not have that much possession of the ball. They may not have had many chances in this game. But they've certainly got the quality in that final third to make every chance that comes to them count. And it's Lionel Cole finds Kane. Kane into the box. It's getting a bit tense now as we're past the hour mark. United starting to turn up the heat. They've had five shots now, two on target. Whereas we haven't really done much in the final third since the uh, the first half. We've got three defenders, no one yellow cards. Someone's going to get sent off here today. can just feel it. Right, let's make a change. I'm thinking Kai Kai on for Brady on the left side. And maybe Simon Murphy, who in the last episode I mentioned has broken out into this first team after he scored that winning goal against Southampton. He was brilliant. Got great potential, bags of it. And I hope uh, if I keep starting him or bringing him on off the bench, give him some minutes for Shrewsbury Town, he's just going to get better. We'll have a young, decent side heading into our next season if we're still in the Premier League. And now Kane, oh, Luke Shaw on top of him straight away, winning the ball back. It's very nervy at the moment for both teams. We'll go attacking. And it looks like United, they're playing a lot more defensive. They got three at the back, or are they playing with five at the back? Maybe with their, their wing backs. Oh, that's in for Naji. Oh, he's put it wide. And Naji puts our, probably our best chance wide. How is he not scoring? He's our top goal scorer. He's got a real keen eye for goal. But yet he can't convert it there against United. Maybe it's the pressure that put him off. Bakuna now. On to Sully Kai Kai. Let's have a bit of flair from him. He finds Luis Alberto. Cole doesn't have Kane in support. Naji. He's hoping he was going to get ahead to that now. And Griezmann one on one with Long. Icardi recovered well. And Kane's there as well. Adnan Yanazai. He's got the overlap of Luke Shaw on the outside. Back to Herrera. Folland, he's offside, he has scored, but it's offside, thank God. With just minutes to go, that would just be my luck. Let's go overload. 
We're not going to do anything here now. That's it. Full time at the Greenhouse Meadow. It's Shrewsbury Town nil, Manchester United nil. We are yet to win and we are yet to lose against United. Who would have thought it, eh? Our first season in the Premier League and we're not even struggling against Manchester United. I thought we would. I thought they'd be banging in the goals. But we've really... Um, we've pinned them back in both games. I'm really happy with that. And this result means that we retain our spot in eighth in the top half of the table. So there it is, look at that, we're still in 8th, we're 2 points above Crystal Palace, we're 3 points behind Stoke, and if Manchester United are to go on a bit of a, a bit of a losing streak, we might be able to catch up, there's still plenty of time, although they do have a game in hand now, we're on 32, we've only got 6 games remaining, who knows, I mean Arsenal they're almost out of sight of us, we, we could very well end this season in the top half. Especially when you look at our next couple of fixtures. We've got West Ham away. But you can see they're just about keeping their heads above water. That's going to be at Upton Park. So it could be a bit tricky. Then we've got Everton. Who, again, look at the league table. They're in 19th. They're pretty much relegated. They've only got 19 points to their name. I think if they lose their next game, then they've pretty much gone down. And West Brom. These three games... The perfect opportunity, folks, for us to stay in the Premier League this season. And then we've got Chelsea and Arsenal. And then we've got Brighton. And I'm thinking... And again, look at Brighton. They're in 18th. They're also in the relegation zone. So the fixture list has been kind to Shrewsbury Town in the business end of the season. we just got to make sure we put in the hard work now with just six games to go. That's going to be it for this episode then. The next one will be the season finale. As always, I will go over the games that I've played off camera, which in this case will be the West Ham, Everton, West Brom, Chelsea and Arsenal game. And then we'll jump into the live com game of the last game of the season away to Brighton. Hopefully that next episode will be exciting and we'll be able to celebrate our survival in the Premier League and be looking forward to next season. Um, better yet, maybe we'll be in the top half. Maybe we'll be able to battle it out with Manchester United for a Europa League spot. How amazing would that be for next season? There we go then. That's it for this episode. Be sure to tune in for that season three finale. You don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching, guys.